with Sandy and from Quilters Attic Sewing Center in Pine Bush, Newark. Today I'm going to show you to make the bottle bag. This is a quilt smart project, which means it's done on a pre-printed fusible interfacing and it is really simple and fun. I have one here made in adorable Easter fabric and you can see that it's a cute little bag. It has a handle, it has a lining and a cute little tie. This tie is attached to the bag. So when it's opened, it is still secure and it fits a full bottle of wine. You can also do, if it's something like an Easter bag, you can do gift items such as Hershey Kisses or any kind of chocolate, an Easter bunny inside would be very cute. But this bag is great for anything. But the, the main reason it was made was for wine bottles. So we're going to go over how to do this today. To get started, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need the Quilt Smart bottle bag instructions and interfacing. When you first purchase, you get the instructions and two sets of interfacing all in the package. These are available on our website at quiltersattic.com. If you enjoy making them and you want to make more, you can get interfacing panels individually and not have to buy the instructions over and over again. But when you open your pattern, you will have this right here, the front cover. The back cover tells you what you need to make the project and inside are all your instructions. So this handy little card tells you everything you need to know. In the package, you'll have two pre-printed interfacings and these have some brown lines on it. Sometimes you might see blue lines or a different color, but no worries, it all works the same. You will also need for each bottle bag, a 36 inch piece of ribbon if you'd like to do the tie or two 18s are fine, but two pieces of ribbon and two fat quarters of your choice. You can use directional fabric. It will work just fine, but you need two fabrics. I like to have one on the outside busy and the one on the inside a nice accent that's a little plainer, but that's up to you. The bag itself is reversible, but the ties will only be on one side, so you really can't reverse it that easily unless you want to get awfully creative and have ties on both sides. And if you do, have fun with it. But but technically, it is a, a, a single-sided bag with a lining, not a reversible bag. One other thing that you will want is something to turn your handles with. Now, I've always used a fast turn. But there is another product, and this one is Easy Point and Turner. Either way, it works great. It will turn the handle very simply. You'll be done in a jiffy. I will show you how to use these as we come to that point. If you're enjoying the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as we have other videos. The video you're watching right now is to make the bottle bag, but we also have a YouTube video that teaches the smart bag. Similar technique, it's got two handles, so it's more like a little tote bag. And that comes with instructions and pre-printed interfacing as well. So you can also find that on our YouTube channel. If you search sewing with Sandy, you're going to see all of our videos or search at Quilters Attic Sewing Center. Either way, you're gonna see all our videos and we thank you for watching. With all that being said, let's get started on today's project. Opening up your instruction sheet, the first instruction says just to rough cut all the way around the dotted line here where, where it shows the scissors for the cutting. That's just a quick rough cut to get rid of some of the extra fusible interfacing. Don't cut exactly on the line, but approximately a quarter inch away. You can use scissors or you can use your rotary cutter, whatever you're more comfortable with. I am more comfortable with a rotary cutter, so I placed my ruler about a quarter inch beyond that cut line just to give myself a rough cut. We're only getting rid of this so we don't accidentally fuse this to our iron or our ironing board. I did the one side, I'm just gonna flip around. Again, this is a rough cut, so don't get too uptight about how close or far away it is. Again, scissors are fine if you'd like. And I'm just reading on the little thing right here. It says it will hold a standard bottle of wine or one of the large bottles. The one I have in my display is the standard size bottle. 
We can also cut the ends. There's not too much to cut there, but we'll just cut a little bit just to get rid of this little bit of bulk. Now that that is done, we're ready to move on to step two. Step two talks about placing your fabrics on your fusible interfacing and fusing them down. There is an outer section and a lining section and it tells you which way because you want the lining on the inside to have the opening where we're going to turn it all right side out. So pay attention to that when you're looking. If you have a directional fabric, you are going to be careful to place that at the top. I will go over where to place that. And if you're looking at the bag we've already made, we did use directional fabric. You can see we have bunny rabbits and little chicks. They are all facing the right way. So we promise it can be done and it can be done very simply. So you just wait and I'll show you. If you look at your interfacing, we are placing it with the fusible side up. If you're not sure which side that is, feel for the little bumps. Those bumps are glue. They are heat activated. We place our fabric down and iron them. That will melt the glue and draw them up into the fabric so we can feel those bumps. And if you still aren't sure, you want to be able to read the words place top of outer fabric here. That's where we want to start. We want to take our fat quarter for our outside of our bag and we want to place it right there. If you have a directional fabric, which is quite possible, quite easy to work with, we want to place the top here. And that's why it says place top of outer fabric here, top of your direction. If it's birds, we want them flying with their heads up and their feet down, whatever it may be, make sure the top is up here. There is a little bit of extra fabric. We technically only need a piece about 16 by 18 inches. I am using a full fat quarter now, just because that's what we had cut. And I am going to fuse it. If you'll notice, it says place top here. And it also says place lining here. There is going to be approximately a half an inch gap in between. And that is correct. The next thing you're going to do is use an iron slowly go over your project. You don't want to go too fast because you want to give that glue, the fusible, a couple seconds to melt under the heat of the iron and then draw up towards the heat, which is into the back of your fabric. If you're more comfortable with a pressing sheet, go ahead and put that on top. You do not want to touch your iron to the fusible or you will glue it right to the bottom of your iron and you'll be very cranky. So just take your time, slowly do it. I am not using a pressing sheet right now because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. But if I was going to use it, I'd just place it right on top. You'll need to press a little bit longer because you need to give more time for that glue to melt as the heat has to transfer through that Teflon. I am working right in front of you on a small pressing surface. If I were doing this myself, I would be on a larger ironing board and I would do this in one section. But because I cannot do that, I, I press the top section. I'm going to pull this up and keep pulling. And now I'm going to press the bottom section that has not been adhered yet or fused. I'm starting where it's already fused and working towards where it's not. So if there's any bubbles, I'm pushing them towards the bottom and not creating a fold in the center. I do have water in my iron. That steam, that heat really helps melt that glue or that fusible. Now that that is done, we are going to rotate our interfacing. We're going to put the lining fabric on the other half of our pre-printed interfacing. I'm ready to place my next one down. It says right here, place top of lining here against that fine dotted line. Most times your lining will not be directional, but if it is, that's okay. And you're going to place the top of the lining. So just to make sure, again, if it's directional, that is up here. You're noticing now we have our half inch gap. 
that is fine. If you'll notice right here, there's little bits of frayed edges and that is okay. I will explain why that is okay. Normally that is something I would trim up before I work on any project, but I just took these right as they were handed to me at our store and I used them. And the reason I'm okay with that is because those are going to be pressed down and we're gonna be sewing on all the lines of our pre-printed interfacing. We are not using that as any edge guide or any, anything to gauge our seam allowance. Those are gonna get tucked inside in the fusible, never to be seen again. So it's okay that they haven't been trimmed perfectly. So whatever you prefer to do, is fine. Now that I've got this placed exactly where I want, right along that fine dotted line, I'm going to fuse it just like I did on the outside. Now that everything is fused, we're ready to move on to step number four in your directions, which is telling us to trim on all the outside lines. And we're gonna cut off at the bottom of each side, the handle. So we're just gonna cut on all the cutting lines. You can see on the line before we rough cut about a quarter inch larger, there's a little extra fusible right here. We are now going to cut exactly on that dotted line. This time I would recommend using your rotary cutter and a ruler, so everything is nice and straight. At the bottom here, we are going to cut off our handle right along the dotted line. And you'll, you know to cut because there's little pairs of scissors. So we're going to cut right there. Now that this is coming away, we're also going to cut on this dotted line down here. And we're going to cut on this dotted line over here. That handle is done, that side of the handle. And we're gonna keep cutting. Again, follow the dotted lines. We're going to cut this handle off the bottom of the bag, line up to that dashed line, dotted line, cut that away, cut on this side and cut on the end. Now we've cut all the way around all four sides of our bag. It's few, everything is fused down. And we've also cut the handles away and trimmed on the lines so those are perfectly even. Next thing we're gonna do is do a little sewing to create our handle. We'll talk about turning it and we'll put it all together. Step number five says put your handles right sides together and sew. You can do a couple of things. You can pin them or you can just line them up. You can sew with a quarter inch foot and use that as a guide with the edge of your fabric, or you can use an open toe foot and sew right on the line. I've chosen to do that. I have my open toe foot on and I'm going to lower my stitch length just a little bit to a 2.0. Sew so a quarter inch seam or sew right on the line but use your needle down, a few stitches forward, a few stitches backwards, and then stitch all the way down. I'm 
When I get to the end, I'm going to do a reverse or a tie-off stitch there. And then cut. Don't turn the corner and go all the way around. You'll close up your handle. One side is now sewn. You're going to do the other side now. Forward, backward, and then follow the line or do a quarter inch seam. At the end, back stitch and cut. If you turn it over and you weren't exactly on the line, don't stress, don't worry. This is going to become the inside of the handle and no one will be the wiser. So don't worry about that at all. The next thing we need to do is to turn this right side out. We only have one handle to turn and I have two methods to show you. So I'm going to turn it, turn it back the wrong way and then turn it again. And you decide which one you like better. The two methods I have to show you are the fast turn and this easy turner. First, I'm gonna do the fast turn. This is the way I have been doing it for a long time, but I find they're both great methods. The fast turn is a tube. You're going to stick the tube inside your handles. Now the handles were done right sides together, so we need to now get the right side on the outside. Place your this in your tube and just pull it all the way down. When you get close to the top, you don't want your tube to come out of the top. What you want it to do is bring your fabric right up to the edge and fold it over so the tube has fabric on the end instead of an opening. Then we're going to take this little magic wand that has a corkscrew at the end, slide it in the tube, and then turn until, like corkscrew it, until it pops out up here. Then you're going to gently slide it inside and just keep, you see, I'm grabbing this gently and pulling the magic wand there, pull that down. And eventually we see your handle come out of the bottom like magic. Last thing you need to do is just uncorkscrew that so this detaches. So there it is, you'll just pull out your end and we'll have to press that. But I'm gonna undo that so I can show you the other method and. Like I said, you decide what works for you. So I'm gonna slide this back inside, cover this, put that in, twist and pull back. It's very, very simple. If you've had to turn tubes, handles, straps with a safety pin, it was not fun. So there it is, all turned back the way we started. Now we can use the other method. This turner is a hoop, a ring. It opens, one side has a point on it, one side is a rounded side. We're going to put the rounded one, our, 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 um, our tube or our handle on the rounded side and instead, just like before, instead of poking, so it pokes all the way out, we're gonna leave a little fabric over the edge and then we're going to shut this little clamp and we want to shut very close to the edge. Might be easier if we take both and both sides in. We've clamped it down gently and now we're going to pull this. I find this one a tiny bit harder to get started, but the benefit to this is it is so skinny that we can do almost any size tube where the fast turn were a little more limited with the tube size we could do, the handle size. So I've got this started. I'm just kind of working it down. And every time you do it, you get a little faster, but it's already turning. You can see it's, it's pulling off this side and coming down over here. Pulling, 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 pulling. You can see the right side is popping out. I can't really pull any further. So I'm going to take, unclamp, open that up, pull this out. And there it is. Again, all turned right side out and it just needs a quick press to look proper. So those are the two methods we have, the fast turn and the easy point turner, the easy turner. With your handle, you have two options. You can press it in half like this. So we have half lining, half outer fabric showing on both sides or the more traditional thing would be to press so we have the outer fabric on one side, the inner fabric on the other. Totally up to you, whichever you prefer. This is to me the least fun part. 
but it has to be done. I go in with my fingers and just kind of try to pull it out. And I do both sides at the same time. You can go and do one side first, then the other. I kind of find I try to pull out both at the same time. It's a handle on a bottle bag. It's okay if it's not perfect. And there is your handle. You have the option now to top stitch both sides or leave it just as it is. Whatever you prefer, I'm gonna leave this one just like this. When you place your handle down, it is recommended that you match the like sides together, the two outsides. If you wanna do it opposite, that's okay. But doing it this way will keep the same fabrics in the same spots. The lining will stay on the inside, the, the uh, outside will stay on the outside. You're going to take the edge of your handle, line it up to the edge of the fabric. And if you end up going in a little too far, your handle gets a little shorter. And if you want a slightly shorter handle, you can do that, but do not go past this dotted line on the inside where it says first fold line. I recommend doing exactly what they say and lining it right up to the edge of the fabric. You're going to be sewing eventually. And we don't wanna to have to worry about the pins. These pins are gonna be on the inside. So we are going to place them back a ways. And so when we stitch, they are not in the way and the heads are very far away. I put two in just so it doesn't rock back and forth and get a little crooked. We need to somehow now get this all the way over to this side. So we're going to turn this handle. It a little short but we can do it and place that right up to there i may have my pins just a back just a smidge too far it's making it a little harder to make that turn okay all right so we're going to turn this don't twist your handle around but just leave it flat and line up the raw edges over here The most important thing now is to make sure that the pin, the heads of the pins are far away from where we're going to be sewing where the raw edges are. Now that that is placed, we can kind of flatten our handle out a little bit. You're going to place the two right sides together. And when we flip it, there's going to be a line that says first fold line. We're gonna fold right on that dashed first fold line I'm going to turn it around and we're going to place a few pins. First fold lines. Once you've placed a few pins, we're going to check one more thing. We're going to just turn it around to the bottom side and make sure that these are going to be fairly even in the end. They're going to be fine. They're not quite perfect now that, because the handle is giving a bubble, but it looks fairly square and it's not sitting something like this. You wanna make sure once we pin it and we have it semi-flat, looks fairly lined up. Now that this is done, you're gonna go ahead and stitch sew all the way across. I like to, when I get to my handles, to go over it, you know, go over the edges a few times just to give it a little more security. I am now stitching on the line, the pre-printed line. I'm gonna go forward and backward at the beginning. My needle down is engaged. I can easily pull my pins out. I can see where the handle is because I have this little grid here. I can also feel when my machine hits it. I'm gonna do a couple back stitches at the beginning. Go over the handle. When I get to the end, do a couple back stitches at the end. Now these pins are magic pins. They're super easy to grab right as you're sewing. You don't even need to stop. The heads are so easy to grasp. So those are, those are magic pins. Back stitch, back stitch at the other end of the handle. And now that I'm at the end, I'm gonna back stitch at the end and cut. 
one more seam and we'll be done. But before we can do that, we have to open it up, press a little bit and do a little more pinning, but just a few minutes and it'll be all done. I'm opening up my bag. I'm gonna remove the pins and you can see why putting them where we did was great because they weren't in the way as we sewed. And now we are going to press towards the outer fabric. I'm actually going to flip this over, put my outer fabric on top. So when I fold back, I'm able to very easily press towards the outer fabric. You'll want to cut your bag tie to be about 36 inches or two 18 inch pieces. And on the outside fabric, it tells you place your cording on the outside of fabric. Now we've used grow grain ribbon, cording is fine as well. I've used a very, very, very fine wire edge ribbon, a very fine wire, nothing too heavy, but I've used that on other ones. Now we're going to just, I'm folding instead of using two 18 inch pieces. Right here, it needs to go on the right side of the fabric. It can't go on the lining side or uh, on this back side or it'll stay inside forever. So we're very nicely going to place that right there where it says, and you can see I have a little bit sticking out. We're going to make that a little neater and get that lined up with the edge. Now we're going to fold at the second fold line. You can see the second fold line right here. We're gonna make sure we tuck the ties in so they don't get tangled up anywhere. So we're going to take this extra, the ties. We're just gonna gently wrap them right around here. That'll keep them away from getting caught here. It's just a precautionary. It doesn't really do a whole lot of anything except keep them out of our way. Now we're going to fold. Along the second fold line, we want to make sure where the lining, where this shows the tie, we have it facing up. And we also want that facing up so we see the leave open to turn. If this was on the bottom and we didn't leave an opening, we'd be in big trouble. First thing you want to do is line up this top section right here, because this is the top of the bag and we want that to line up nicely. This is gonna be the inside, this is the outside bottom, this is right smack at the top. So we're gonna get it as perfect as we can, put a pin there and put one through all that bulk right there. And you're going to pin the inside lining up all the edges. And we're gonna do the same thing with the outside, with the other fabric. We've started up here, we've pinned here already. Now we're going to line all these edges up. And things don't lie perfectly flat because that handle's in there somewhere and it's very bulky and it just causes things to not lie how you want them to. But that's okay, that's what the pinning is for. We've got the end lined up there, we've got the end lined up there, and then we're just going to smooth that out and put some pins in. Now that everything is pinned, we're going to take that over to the sewing machine. We're going to sew, pulling the pins out as you go. I'd recommend backstitching at the beginning and end, at the corners on each corner, where it says leave open to turn, and over the tie where we have the little marking indicating we have the tie around. We have a couple starts and stops, a couple places we need to backstitch, and that's what we're going to do. At the beginning, we're going to go forward and backward. Pulling the pins out. When we get to the corner where we should make the turn, go right up to the corner, go back a couple stitches, come back forward, and then make it the turn. Couple forward, couple backward. Now you're going to sew all the way until it says leave open to turn. Make sure you backstitch there. Jump right over that leave open to turn. Start sewing again. These are great because the lines are all printed that tells you what to do. It's wonderful. These zip up so quickly. I'm getting to the top where the 
the lining and the outside meet. I go over it. I'm going to go backwards and then back forward and continue on. When I get to where the ties are, I will go over that with a back stitch, a forward stitch, back over it again, just secures it a little bit more, and then go all the way down to the corner. The whole thing is sewn, except for the spot where we have leave open to turn. But before we can turn it, we want to go ahead and box the bottom so when it's sitting, it sits nice and flat with square bottoms instead of the fabric sticking out and pointing out. So we're going to box the bottoms and then we'll turn it right side out. Quilt Smart has given you lines to do when you're boxing the bottom. To box the bottoms, you want to take this seam and this seam and line them up on top of each other. So to do that, you're going to grab the, the front, the top fabric in one hand, go to the back, grab the bottom fabric and pull them apart. And as we pull, this fabric, this seam is getting closer to that seam. So they have to lie on top of each other. It's, it's kind of awkward if you've never done it before. but it's not hard. Now this doesn't have a line printed here, but we have to imagine that this goes straight across and is nice and straight. If it doesn't appear straight, maybe we're not lined up properly. You can stick a pin in here and through this seam and see if it comes out on the back. Oh my goodness, I am so far off. There we go, that feels better. I'm gonna stick it straight through here it comes out on the seam back there, I think I'm good. So I'm going to stick a pin here. If you'd like to stick another pin, by all means, go ahead. Just don't stick one on the line we need to sew on, which is this line right here. We're gonna now sew that. You can go around and do all four at once. I find it easier to sew one as I go. So get that as flat as you can. Get it into your sewing machine and sew on that line. My pin was already in the way. Couple forward, couple backwards, and then just all the way across that line. And there we have it, one boxed bottom. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side where we have a seam, two seams, a seam here. We have a seam here and a seam here. We're going to pull them apart and do the same thing. Grab this top fabric in one hand, the bottom fabric in the other and pull apart. I can, I can feel that these, this seam is not lined up with the seam over here. So I'm just kind of wiggling them around. It feels better in my hands now, but I'm going to stick a pin right here and see if it comes out on the bottom. Not quite, but close. Okay, now it looks good to me. If you have another method for boxing the corners, by all means, go for it going to go ahead and sew right across that line right now. And we sewed across that line. This side where we had the fold line versus a stitch line, we have to match up that fold with the dotted line with a seam line. So it's the same thing again. We're going to pull apart, but we're instead of matching two seam lines, we're matching a dotted line to a sewing line. So pull apart. I'm going to stick through the seam line and see if it comes out on the fold line. Pretty close. Looks good. These actually seem slightly easier because it's not as bulky. And 
And now we're going to stitch on that line. And there we have another boxed corner. Pull the pin out. And we're going to do the same thing on our final side. And there's our final one, remove the pins. And now we're gonna be ready to turn it right side out. Now that it's all done, my four corners are boxed. You can trim any loose threads, find the opening on the lining side. And you're going to stick your hand inside, either go as far as you can to the other side or use this hand to push. And then just gently pull it out, gently. Okay. Pulling, it's looking great. You're gonna just stick your hand in the other side. And I'm poking this out nicely only to get this stitched how I want it. Otherwise this is gonna stuff inside the bag. But before we can stuff inside the bag, we wanna close up that opening. You have the option to hand stitch or machine stitch. Hand, four letter word I don't use, don't do, unless I have to. But for this, I don't think it's necessary. So I've just gathered the seam nicely between my fingers here, done the same thing down here, just a little tug. You can go to your ironing board and get it pressed perfectly, but it's the inside of a bottle bag, doesn't matter that much. So I've pulled it, the seams look nice to me where it's all folding nice where the seam should be. And I'm just going to put a few pins And now we're just gonna to go to the machine and top stitch right there. I am going to switch feet and I'm gonna use a narrow edge foot on the faf. And what the narrow edge foot is, it has a little guide right here. That's going to run right along the edge like we do many times with a quarter inch foot. It's gonna run right along the edge of the fabric. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my needle and you might be able to see my needle just moved off to the side. You see I'm moving it again. And now when I sew, it's going to be nice and close to the edge and nice and even. Couple forward, couple backwards. Not sure if you noticed, but right from the beginning, I had a matching thread to the lining. So when it came to this step, I was ready and there was no excuse for me not to do it while I was here. I'm right, I see I have to go all the way to here. I'm gonna pull that pin out. So it's right to where my finger is. So I will not sew through my finger, but at least I know where I've got to go. Back stitch and cut. And I've got my edge stitch right there. The bag is all done now, except for stuffing the lining inside and putting something in it. So we're going to just tuck our lining inside. Push, push, push. I would recommend going to your iron, just give that top a nice quick press. If you would like to stitch around it, you can certainly do that. Give you a little top stitch at the end. You've got your hand, uh, your ties will come around and will tie up nicely here. I've placed a bottle of wine in and now I'm going to tie it up. I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you. We'd love for you to see all the fun things that we do. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.